Whoa, let's go guys. We are getting a ton of brand new content in the first descendant and I think all of this is going to be playable at beta. Not only are we getting close to the release of the game, but we're getting really, really close to have a date of when the beta is going to get released. Today we got brand new news regarding the death notes and we're going to go over every single detail. The main big thing here is being dungeons and a new mechanic that's going to help us test out all our stuff, all our gear as first descendants so if you want first descendants to drop fast hit that like button and let's get started so the dev notes strike off right off the bat with one of the most important things in the game and that is the brand new introduction to a instance called dungeons now the great thing about dungeons is that they are meant to offer convenient mission gameplay but it's also meant to guarantee different volume and variety when it comes to the game they're going to be adding this in addition to the interception battles, which aim to establish dungeons as an end game content. There's going to be a ton of variety, not only for single player, but also co-op. And they're going to support different types of levels that you will be able to adjust. And this is where things get really interesting because you can set this from normal to hard as you're seeing right now in the image. But in addition to that, guys, there are a lot of really cool things because you can actually replay these with different variants. So for example, what I mean by that is you could actually get this and you know start this mission from Albion, or you could actually start it from where that dungeon is located within a, uh, a mission beacon. Now, with that being said, when you change the difficulty level on these particular missions, you're going to be giving a ton of options. And the great thing about this is that you're actually going to be able to see the rewards. Not only will you get weapons, but you will also get modules that you're able to use. And in addition to that, you also will be able to select rewards that you want to get. Now, the way you do that is by selecting more options. So when you go to the more options tabs, you're able to go ahead and put, do you want the descendant HP to be 10% decreased? If you do, you're going to get a better reward. Do you want the firearm attack to be decreased by 10%? If you select it, you will get a better reward. Do you want the defense to be knocked down 10%? Then you can. And you could also set the difference between the normal uh, voltage attack with an increase or a decrease, which is actually pretty cool. Once you have everything selected, you hit enter. And the great thing about this is you're going to be able to kind of the more difficult you play it, the more rewards you will get, which is actually a really cool addition. But it doesn't stop there because this is something that I've been talking to the team. I've been asking for them to implement and I'm finally glad we can finally share this with you guys because this is extremely amazing. So one of the things that I found when playing the game was that we needed a little bit set of puzzles, you know, a little bit of things to make the dungeon areas a little bit more challenging and a little bit more fun, create those type of interactions where you're like, oh, dang, man, I should have done that a little bit better. Well, they're actually be doing that because now they're going to be adding strategic gameplay to the game to make it a little bit more fun. There's going to be brand new hidden mechanics and traps to be able to make the dungeon really fun and make it a key component of the first ascendant. So as the game progresses, they're going to be adding more dungeons, implementing more cool bosses. In addition to that, implementing the difficulty, the strategy, and of course the different puzzles you're able to uh, kind of solve as you work your way through the dungeons. I thought this was a very good addition and I'm glad they actually listened to feedback because this is something that I really wanted to implement it because it did so well in Destiny and I think it would fit, you know, it fit perfectly in this game and I'm glad the development team actually listened. That's why it's extremely important that guys, if you have any suggestions, any comments, drop them in the comment section down below. If it's really good, I'll try to get it to the dev team so they can implement it. Remember, we are in beta. We can still change things if the game is not fully released and if it's things like this that can get added and make the game more fun and enjoyable, then I'm all power to it, right? Now, with that being said, they made a little bit of improvements, which is the with the matchmaking system. And this is something that was a little bit of finicky when it came to the first beta. But this with this brand new uh, open beta, they're going to improve that when it comes to the intercept battles and also to the dungeons. Now you'll be able to play in a thing called private match option, which will allow you to establish your team immediately before you actually go in there and play that mission, which is actually really cool. You're going to be able to open this and close this whenever you want. And this will all be able to be done via the hub, which is actually pretty cool. As you're seeing right here in the screen right there. Now, in addition to that, guys, they also made some really good improvements to the mission gameplay UX, uh, UX UI. 
as you guys noticed, a lot of people really didn't like that there was a little bit of misinformation coming from the UI and they wanted more information to be progressed. And they said that they were gonna do this by being able to do it the way I'm showing you guys right now in the image for adding new uh, instances when it came to mission requirements. Like if you have multiple objectives, multiple things to do, this way now you have something that you can literally just watch from your screen and it will tell you if the matchmaking is in progress, how much time is left for the hacking progress. It's also gonna tell you which base needs defending, which base doesn't need defending. And now you'll be able to see a really big flashing mission completion sign to let you know that that mission has been completed. Overall, it's a very well designed and I think this is gonna give it a little bit more friendly environment when it comes to new people joining the game. It's not gonna be overwhelming because a lot of things are gonna be within the UI that are gonna be able to tell you exactly what's going on. In addition to that, they went ahead and added something called support droids, which are gonna be located in key locations and camps, dungeons and fields to provide additional players or to play you with different sets of rounds to be able to access. So you'll be able to walk up to this and get some more, you know, more ammo, more stuff if you need so from these support droids that are gonna be located and scattered around the world, which are actually pretty cool, cool because before it was like, man, you know, I need, I need a little bit more ammo. Now it's cool that you actually have a little like droid that you could go to and get that ammo so you could continue that battle or get ready to get in an engagement in a battle. Now, they're gonna be talking about new content, special operations, reaching blocks, which they plan on doing and adding as the game launches. Currently, mind blocking and resource defense is a new special operation that the devs have codenamed Research Blocking, which is set to offer a brand new uh, fun experience that's going to stand a little bit apart from what we currently have, and it's going to be kind of like an objective-based type of uh, mission. Uh, just to give you guys a little bit of, of like an idea of what this actually means, is that they're going to conduct secret research for the vulgar researchers. Research, sorry. And it's going to appear within your application to do that battle. And the monsters are going to have different special abilities where they could grant you a secret mission for you to carry out as part of a research or an experiment, which is actually a really cool new engagement that we're going to have. And anytime we get new content, it's always amazing. Speaking about new content, now they went ahead and added a thing to the journals tab, which is going to let you know what achievements and what titles you have that have been added to the UI. So whenever you want to go see, what new achievements, what new titles you were you have been able to obtain, you can literally go to the tab right here, look at it, and you will be able to see what those achievements are and what the uh, you know the progression are for those titles and those achievements, which is really, really cool. Now, they also went ahead and allowed you to do a little bit of titling, which you guys are see right here, you're gonna be able to put something like promising, custodian, unhand, rats, return, cold, thrill, fearsome which is cool, cool stuff that you're actually gonna be able to add. Now, in addition to that, they added one new thing called laboratory. Now, this is pretty much a firing range, which I think it's extremely awesome because you are able to make so many builds in this game, but sometimes you wanna test them out before you even go into the battlefield. And this is what we have with laboratory. Laboratory is gonna give us the ability of being able to test different equipments, different weapons, and different performance of how our character is gonna interact with different enemies in the field. I think this is a very nice addition. You're gonna be able to find this in Albion and you will be able to see how good your de descendant is and overall how good your build is to fight against the ads, which is I think is a very nice addition that any game needs because especially when it comes to making builds, this is gonna be super important. And of course, we're gonna have you guys completely covered when it comes to build. Now, as part of a quick recap on what happened on the Dev Notes Volume 9, because this is Volume 10, they are going to be adding loadouts, so if you haven't seen that, check that out. They're also going to be allowing you to switch your loadouts. So I made a video regarding that, so if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you guys check it out so you guys can stay informed on everything that has to do with the First Ascendant. As soon as we get information on the beta, you'll hear it here first, so make sure you guys keep it locked here, and I'll talk to you guys later.